This is bad. Look at the time. It's all over. It's all over. Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. The clip you just saw is actually somebody getting submitted by a particular chokehold called the rear naked choke. And we're going to have some fun in this video and talk about the mechanism of how the rear naked choke, quote unquote, puts you to sleep. Uh, a correctly applied rear naked choke should actually be able to cause someone to pass out in about seven to 10 seconds. It does not take long. Um, and you look at this guy right here. This is one technique for actually administering this choke. And what the choke is actually doing, contrary to what most people think, is it's actually compressing the vasculature in the neck, so arteries and veins. And we're going to talk about that. Now, what the mechanism of a rear naked choke does not involve, or I should say its focus should not be, is compressing the trachea. So the trachea is not shown in this picture right here, but it would actually be anterior to your neck vertebral column right here, and it's the windpipe. Okay. Um, if you actually just take your finger and poke the anterior part of your neck, the front part, you'll actually feel the trachea. That's how air gets in and out of the lungs. And you can crank and press on that trachea all you want. It's going to take a very long time to actually cause someone to pass out or, as you see in some movies, kill somebody. Okay. Um, it's not going to be seven to ten seconds. It's going to be much longer than that. So any movie that you've ever seen, usually horror or action movies, where somebody has a rope behind somebody's neck or a chain and they're trying to strangle them, um, normally in the movies they're out in about five to ten seconds. Um, it takes way longer to do that. And so those movies are obviously uh, exaggerating the effect of that particular strangle uh, because no one wants to sit there for two or three minutes and watch that. Now, when this guy is doing the rear naked choke on his opponent, he can use varying amounts of force to compress these blood vessels. However, it's not really so much the force that's important, it's really the technique, meaning the arm placement. If the arms are placed correctly around the opponent's neck, it doesn't take a huge amount of force to compress these blood vessels. Okay? Um, and so it's the placement of the arms, not the force. However, what we can talk about is little amounts of force, moderate amounts of force, and high amounts of force. And so by doing that, we're going to talk about um, how sequentially each of these blood vessels get compressed and what their effects are. So let's take a look at that. So the first set of vessels we're going to look at are the jugular veins. Okay? These really are the most superficial of all of these vessels, so they're closest to the surface. So this thin one right here, this is the external jugular vein, and if you follow it up, it actually goes to drain blood from the external surface of the skull. Okay? So you have blood vessels outside of your skull, they're external, and so that blood is drained via this external jugular vein, and it's returned to the circulation right here. The much thicker one, which is internal, is the internal jugular vein. And if we follow this up, we can see that it actually goes inside the skull. So the blood of the brain, once it's used, has to be returned to the circulation. And so that blood coming from the brain comes down mostly through that internal jugular vein, and it's returned to the circulation. Okay? Now, when you administer a rear naked choke correctly, with only a small amount of force, uh, you're initially going to just compress the internal jugular vein. You also get the external, but we're really concerned about that internal jugular vein there. If you compress the internal jugular vein, blood is not going to be able to be returned as easily from the brain down to uh, this vessel right here, which is the brachiocephalic vein, and ultimately to the heart. Okay? So if you're compressing this vessel, blood can't return down. Okay? So what's that blood going to do? Well, it's going to remain in the brain. And so that's part of why, if you're actually being choked like this, you'll actually feel flushed and kind of bloated in the face, so to speak. Uh, the way to think about this is like a backed up sink, a sink with a clog. Okay? Uh, the clog in the sink is really the compression of this internal jugular vein. If you try with a clogged sink to turn on the sink and get water into there, what's going to happen? It's going to go nowhere. It's going to get backed up. Okay? So if you compress this internal jugular vein, you're basically clogging the sink. And so that blood that's up here in the brain is going to remain there, and it's not going to be able to as easily be returned back to the heart. Okay? The other problem is going to have to do with bringing blood to the brain, which we're going to explore next. If you have a backup of blood here in the brain because you're compressing the internal jugular vein, then you're not going to be able to deliver blood as easily to the brain because it's backed up. 
And that's going to lead us to the next set of vessels, which are the carotid arteries. Okay? And there's actually three of them. The first one we're going to look at is what's called the common carotid artery. Now, in contrast to these jugular veins, which bring blood from the brain back down ultimately to the heart, uh, the carotid artery, or I should say the common carotid artery, is initially what brings blood up to the brain. So blood runs upward. Okay? Now, initially, you might only compress the jugular veins, particularly internal jugular vein. Just a little bit more force, uh, you're going to start compressing the common carotid artery, especially if the chokehold is put a little bit lower on the neck. Okay? So if we follow that common carotid artery upwards, we're going to reach this thing right here called the carotid sinus. Okay? We're not going to worry too much about that here, but notice at the carotid sinus, also called the carotid body, uh, the common carotid artery bifurcates into two separate vessels. So the one that goes more internal, which will actually go into the skull, is the internal carotid artery. So we could probably speculate that that internal carotid artery brings blood to the brain. But there's also an external carotid artery that goes outside of the skull. And so any structure outside the skull, for example, your facial musculature, frontalis muscle, occipitalis, um, those are ultimately supplied by the external carotid artery. Okay? If you apply a chokehold a little bit lower on the neck, uh, you're going to have a much better uh, chance to compress the common carotid artery. If you apply it up a little higher, you're probably going to get the common carotid artery and the internal carotid artery. Either way, you're going to compromise blood flow to the brain. And this is actually the major mechanism of why people pass out so quickly in 7 to 10 seconds. Okay? You're not getting adequate blood to the brain. And so your body's response is to cause you to pass out. No blood to the brain means no glucose delivery, no oxygen delivery. And then in addition, uh, if you're compressing that internal jugular vein, no waste products are being removed from the brain. So this is a big problem. And that's why it only takes 7 to 10 seconds to knock somebody out. Now, if you apply a little bit more force, you can actually comp compress this last artery, uh, known as the vertebral artery. Okay? Uh, if you look at the vertebrae right here, so up here at the top, this is C1, here's C2, here's C3, C4, C5, 6, 7. Right? Um, if you actually look, particularly starting at C6, they have these little holes on their sides. And there's this little artery that actually goes through those holes and eventually also is going to go up inside the skull. That's called the vertebral artery. It's named as such because it goes through these holes in the vertebrae and then it goes up into the skull and also supplies the brain. So the two arteries that really are going to directly supply the brain are going to be the internal carotid artery and the vertebral artery. If you apply a little bit more force than needed uh, to compress the internal carotid artery, you're also going to potentially compress the vertebral artery. However, you're going to have a much better chance to compress that artery if the choke is applied a little bit lower on the neck because uh, notice that the vertebral artery is protected by these vertebrae. The holes that they run through are called transverse foramina, but they're protected uh, up here at C6 and above. Uh, down here at the levels of C7 and T1, uh, those, that artery, the vertebral artery, is not as protected, and so a lower applied chokehold is going to be much more effective at compressing that vertebral artery as well. However, compression of the vertebral artery is not necessary to induce somebody to pass out from a rear naked choke. You only need to get that common carotid artery and or internal carotid artery. Something that's going to uh, prevent that blood from going up to the brain. Brain doesn't get enough nutrients, oxygen, glucose, and so you pass out. And that right there is the mechanism of a rear naked choke. So hopefully this video was fun. Hopefully you learned something. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.